In this video, we're going to look at the one and only Jeff Bezos and ask the question, what can we learn about how he's run his business, how he thinks about money, how can we apply it to our own life? Because the purpose of this channel is to think differently, to be more in control of our wealth. And if we can look at successful people and ask the question, how do we reverse engineer those timeless principles to apply in our own life? Like that is the key. And that's that's why I'm super pumped for this video, because I have two pages of notes. I'm going to share with you a three step framework with questions and statements for you to think about as it relates to taking what was inspired by Jeff Bezos and how we can all take this framework and better our life. And so this is what Jeff wrote. If you want to be successful in business, in life actually, you have to create more than you consume. Your goal should be to create value for everyone you interact with. Any business that doesn't create value for those it touches, even if it appears successful on the surface, isn't long for this world. It's on its way out. With So here's the cliff notes to what I'm going to dive into. Number one, we need our active income and our passive income or our leveraged assets to create more than we consume. If we do that, we will be fine the rest of our life. If we don't do that, we're going to be like majority of people that are afraid of running out of money. So our financial lives need to create more value than we're taking. We need to create more cash flow than we're consuming. So that's number one. But the second thing is we have to be very careful in the people that we look to because the people that their financial lives are not built around value creation ultimately might look good today, but will not be able to sustain what they're currently doing. I don't know about you, but it's easy to look at businesses. It's easy to look at people that are flash in the pan. But at the end of the day, don't look at someone's wins or what they are projecting to the world. They may not have that underlying value. And as a result, they will crumble whether it's now or whether it's in the future, because I am a firm believer that there's a lot of people out there that their financial life is not built around value creation, their investments are not built around value creation. And as a result, what they're doing is not fundamentally gonna work long-term. And so here is the framework in a nutshell. We need to create more than we consume. And so when we think about our financial life, we need to create more of what? Really this what is cash flow. Cash flow is what makes the world go round. You can be a billionaire on paper, but cash flow is what pays for groceries and whatnot. So we need to create more than we consume. And so I wanna unpack this. What is consumption? Consumption right now is just the cost of living your life. And so consumption will start here and then in the future it will increase for two reasons. Number one, we tend to spend more the more we're on this earth. So we just increase our standard of living. But the second thing is inflation. We have to spend more just to maintain what we're currently spending. And so on one hand, one factor is you have a consumption line that's not just linear, but in a consumption line that's gonna increase due to inflation and just, uh, you know, we tend to spend more uh, lifestyle inflation, okay? So you have that consumption. And then on the other slide, you have the ability to create income, which majority of us, if we want to admit it or not, are where we are because of our ability to create direct value via a service or a product. And so we have, we can create cash flow, but then if we save and invest cash flow that doesn't go directly in consumption, we can also invest in value creation that can create cash flow. And our creation and our direct active creation of cash flow and our passive or leveraged cash flow needs to be greater than our consumption now and in the future. I think it's beautiful. It's active cash Cash flow plus leverage cash flow needs to be greater than your consumption and your lifestyle. And so that is the framework. And I, I have questions that really will kick us in the gut as it relates to how do we maximize this? Because I think it's cute to see this. But as I've been thinking, I was like, okay, if I had to sit down with each one of you and ask you direct questions, these are the questions I would ask around this framework. And so we're going to start with active cash flow. Why are we starting with active cash flow? Because I believe majority of people watching this, the thing or the way that you can change your life and dramatically increase more value is to looking within and saying, what is my greatest asset? What is my greatest ability to create value for the world? You're looking at it in the mirror. It's yourself. And so often we want to talk about investments and strategies and all that stuff. And all that stuff is good. We're going to talk about that in a second. But a lot of times we are the biggest factor to creating value in the world. And a lot of times we're diversifying our ability to actually have a real impact in the world. A lot of times we're getting too cute with our money and at the end of the day, we're not investing in the actual asset that got us to where we are in the first place. You may need to rewind that and listen to that over and over again because I've seen so many people that are investing way too quickly and devaluing the thing that got them to where they are in the first place. And so here's a couple things that I want to point out. Number one is we need to develop a value lens as it relates to our time. We need to look at our time and our talent and we need to look at our relationships and we need to look at our resources and ask the question, what 
am I doing that's creating value in the world? We really got to get laser focused on like, we need to start thinking through and auditing our life as it relates to value creation. The second point that I made, we have to invest in ourselves until the rate of return of investing in ourselves becomes average with alternative investments. Another way to say this is we shouldn't invest in anything else until we feel like we have maximized our own investment here. Okay. So if you're at a place where you're like, Caleb, I could put money into education and masterminds and learning different skills and it wouldn't change my income at all then okay, then we can say, where should you put your money? And it might be in team members, it might be in systems, it might be in real estate, it might be in the market, I'm cool with that. But majority of people are investing in those things before they're maximized, and as a result, they're shooting themselves in the foot to be able to move forward. I'm telling you, one of the biggest mistakes that people make is they're not obsessed with value creation, and at the end of the day, it shows in how they're even making money. Majority of people can make more money by just providing more value to the marketplace, to your employer, to creating a business or a service or a product that can create more value to the marketplace. And then this is the question that you should all write down and really ask yourself, how can I best use my time and money to create value for others? If every day you just thought about that, you'd be shocked on how much opportunity would uh, come your way. I had a friend that says it's like increasing your luck surface. Yo, Caleb, you got so lucky. Is it luck or is, am I expanding the way I'm thinking and I'm increasing my luck surface by just saying, how can I create more value for the world? So step number one in the framework is these are the statements and questions that for you to think about as it relates to creating more value in your life. The second thing as it relates to consumption is reduce all unnecessary consumption. A lot of us are over consuming on all kinds of things. We're overpaying the government. We're overpaying and it shows up in the kind of debt we have. We're spending money on things that we don't value. And so one thing that I, I would love to do is do an audit and look at fixed and variable expenses and look at, all right, are we overpaying the government? Are you overpaying on taxes? Are you being ignorant to how much money you can pay on taxes? I know if you're a business owner, nine out of 10 business owners that we see overpay on their taxes. It's incredible and insane. And the first thing I would do is do a tax analysis review. We do that in our team. There's other great people that do tax analysis review, but really get crystal clear on, are you overpaying the government? So that's number one. Number two is, is your debt being efficient? Is your credit optimized? Are you just overpaying because of ignorance because you don't know how debt and credit works? That would be a question. But then the biggest thing, and it's not fun for me to say, but a lot of us are just spending money and we're overspending money and we're spending money because our identity and values are in things that maybe it shouldn't be. What Jeff Bezos is talking about as it relates to on the surface, we're flashing the pan, but we're not actually spending money on what we value. This is where we can have a deeper conversation around intentional living. What really matters to you? Because a lot of times we're not spending money on what we truly, truly care about. And so I would do a simple lifestyle audit and just audit. So here's the question. If your financial spending and time management was made public to the world, would you be proud of what you saw or would you be ashamed? In other words, if I publicly went through how you spent your time and how you spent your money, would you be excited to show me or would you be ashamed and try to avoid me? If you would be avoiding me, that might be something deeper inside that says, okay, what would we want to avoid? What would we want to avoid? And I think this is, again, publicizing things can be super helpful because it can keep us accountable. Finally, we need to look at investing in assets that create value. I love this concept of creating value. There's a lot of gurus out there that are talking about passive investments and all this stuff. And I just hate the word passive because it's like almost like divorcing ourselves from actual value creation. When you invest, you should invest in value. When you invest, you should say, if I'm putting my money into something, how is this money funding the value creation for the market? I know that might sound technical, but everything that we put our time and money to, whether it's active or passively, we can't divorce ourselves from the actual value creation because that is what appreciation and cash flow are going to come from. And ultimately, cash flow now and in the future are what we should measure. And so we should invest in assets that create value. And so once you maximize yourself, the assets um, that you invest in should create as much value for others. And the goal here is not just current, but future cash flow. That's how we're going to measure the assets. And so one of the questions is when you include inflation, because remember, consumption is not just current, but it's future adjusted for inflation. How much cash flow do we need to produce from a standpoint to maintain or live an intentional life, our lifestyle, essentially? You know, Jeff Bezos actually summarized this well. When your assets can produce enough cash flow to maintain your desired consumption, you are creating more than you're consuming. And the goal for us is obviously through active, that's when we can move the needle today. 
but we should be investing and saving as much money as possible and hoping that our leverage cash flow, our assets can turn into creating more value. And the moment that our assets without active time can create more value than our consumption, we're financially free. So my final thoughts is simply, thank you, Jeff Bezos, for just this little nugget. I think from a business standpoint, it's super amazing. I've definitely been inspired by this and Naval as it relates to my value leveraging concept of like create value and amplify that value. And I think like anything, we can take business principles and apply it to our own life. And so I would love to hear your thoughts on on Jeff Bezos' thoughts around uh, creating more than you consume. I would love your thoughts on my three-part framework. And does this make sense? Like, is this something that it can be timeless and for you to like reverse engineer what you should be focused your time on. I would also love to know, like, are you someone that feels like you can make more money or do you need to focus on reducing consumption or are you in the place where you need to optimize your saving and investing? Because those are the three categories and it doesn't make one better than the other. But the reason I started one versus three is I, I started with what I believe is to be the most important and then the second most important and then the third most important. And so obviously at Better Wealth, we are dedicating our company, quite frankly, to helping you live more intentionally by keeping more, being more efficient. And we do that by looking at these three categories. And so if there's anything we can do as a company, please let us know. We got more resources down below. And again, you liking, sharing, and just watching till the end really, really helps our channel get seen by more people. And so I want to personally thank you from the bottom of my heart for supporting this channel.